And we're back, Jonathan. Welcome to the Road to Code episode 21. 21. 21. That's a pretty long time. We've been going for a while. Yeah, we have 21 weeks, in fact. Well, it may look to our audience like 21 weeks. Um, we actually took a, a break for a couple of weeks and uh, we're catching up now. One was a uh, little vacation break you took. Yeah. And, um, and then the other one was a little birthday celebration of yours. Yeah. So, yeah, so we're catching up here. But, uh, yeah, I think, I think we're doing good, though. Um, our last episode was when we interviewed uh, a former co-worker, buddy of mine, uh, by the name of Jeff. And, um, yeah, Jeff helped us with writing a, a application for a little lottery system or not a lottery system, but a, uh, what do they call it? Raffle system. Yeah. Random number generator. Yeah. Yeah. So that's kind of cool episode. That's episode 20, right? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So if anybody wants to check out that random raffle, um, you guys can check, check it out. I think it's like 20 lines of code. It took us like less than 30 minutes to ride. Mm -hmm. So yeah, so it's kind of cool. Um, let's uh talk about some uh, merch. Yeah, want to share your screen and, and talk about what we got. All right. Oops. The road to code And under official merch, it'll take you to the merch store where you can pick up t-shirt, tote bags, and mugs. But you know, we're in the we're we're coming up on the end of a pandemic here. You know, it's it's we've called it officially over, but I think we're we're starting up a new wave here. And so people may not have the money, Jonathan, to get this stuff. How can they get this stuff for free? All you have to do is subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. What and channel? The uh, my, the YouTube channel that we post our podcast on. Oh, is, and how do we get there? You go to youtube.com slash Growing up, John. What? Gro groaning up, John? I think it's, you spelled it wrong. Grow. Ooh. Here we go. Growing up, John. Forward slash growing up, John. All one word, lowercase. Cool. And all I got to do is subscribe, huh? Subscribe and then leave a comment on the video. And if you are already subscribed, what do you got to do? All you have to do is just leave a comment on any of our videos saying, if you don't have anything else to say, show me the merch. Got it. Cool. And um, we're going to have this raffle every end of the month, huh? Yeah. Every last Sunday of the month, we're going to have this, this raffle. Cool. And uh, we're going to keep on using our little raffle application. Mm-hmm. Sweet. All right. So there it is. Go to youtube.com forward slash growing up John and subscribe if you haven't. If you're already subscribed, leave a comment in one of our videos. And if you have nothing else to say, just say, show me the merch and that'll enter your name into the drawing. And we'll we'll go ahead and use our little raffle application to determine who the winner is. And we'll contact you to pick up some merch, huh? Yeah. Sweet. All right. Let me take a moment to do a quick plug-in. So during the pandemic, I took some time to create some tutorials. So if you go over to thinkster.io 
and you scroll down to where it says .NET and you look for ASP.NET Web API with Victor Campos, which is yours truly. Mm -hmm. There's some videos that will help you set up a Web API project and a manner that is used in a real, real world scenario. And so it will help you set up the, the solution, uh, set up the NuGet uh, package managers. I'll take you through creating authentication and authorization from scratch using the encryption that is built into the .NET framework. We'll go through and save the data in an encrypted manner all the way down to the database. And um, once you get to the login, that's where you'll probably hit the paywall and you'll have to pony up uh, 20 bucks, I believe. Uh, it's not that expensive. I think it's 20 bucks a month or something. Yeah. So if, um, let's see here. If I go to pro, it's 24 bucks a month. So 24 bucks a month, or you can pay as little as 12 bucks a month if you buy a whole year and if you have a team that you want to work with you can go ahead and sign up your whole team but uh yeah it's definitely worth the the cash and its weight in gold <laughs> <laughs> so uh so yeah check it out um let me know what you think and um yeah cool cool and we're back, Jonathan. Yes. And another episode of The Road to Code. Episode number 22. All right. Man, 22. Whoever thought, whoever <laughs> thunk it. <laughs> well, we got an application to write. I don't care how many episodes it takes us, huh? <laughs> yeah. So let's recap on the meat and potatoes of our last episode. In our last episode, we were putting in a navigation and the navigation, um, we're using Bootstrap 5 and Bootstrap 5 does a little bit of magic with uh, CSS classes where it adds and removes them using a either like a light version of jQuery or some kind of like DOM manipulation library that it has. You can download the bundle and, and make it work with just regular HTML, which manipulates the DOM. But in React, React doesn't manipulate the DOM. It creates a virtual DOM, which then manipulates the real DOM so that it does a comparison and only manipulate what it needs to. So it's, it makes it efficient and makes it a lot faster. Um, and so it's, it, it runs a lot better. So we had to replicate that same behavior with the navigation. So we went through, we grabbed the sample that's on the bootstrap website for the navigation. And we went and in, used the debugging tools in Chrome to see what changes when you hit that, that hamburger menu. Mm -hmm. We figured out what were the changes. We programmed those right into React and, you know, come to realize this is exactly the way that React Strap probably does it. I don't know for sure, but I'm guessing that's probably what they do. They took all that behavior and this is, this is probably the way that they do it, you know, which is cool. I mean, you know, <laughs> great, yep. great job, React Strap. Let's get version five out there, please, so that we don't have to be doing this, you know? It's like, but it was a good exercise, you know, to see what is the magic that Bootstrap is using in order to make the, um, the hamburger menu work when you switch devices to a mobile device, you know? And so, or the viewport changes to a, a mobile device. So that was kind of cool. That was, you know, we, and, and we almost got stuck again, you know, <laughs> but we worked through it and, we were able to figure it out. We we discovered our typo, and um, and fixed it. So, I think in this episode, it's probably a good time to figure out how do we add a significant birth date. Yeah, so let's do it. Let's do it. Share your screen, Jonathan. And let's jump right into it. 
All right. So we have our significant application. We have our placeholder for the ad, right? Mm -hmm. So let's go look at our code in Visual Studio Code. And we're probably going to be using addbirthday.js. Add birthdays at the top, yeah. And so this is a um, this is a class. It's not a function. So if we look at app.js, app.js is a function. Mm -hmm. So we're supposed to use functions as much as possible. But I think for this instance, and you know, we might go back and redo this as a function, but I think I want to do this as a class the first time around. And it's, it's, I find it worth doing the class because as you, as you run into code that's in the industry, you're going to find that there's going to be a lot of classes out there you know, and not many of them are going to be functions. And the reason is, is because functions didn't come until later um, after React had been released. So everybody created these classes. And so this is what you're going to find as you get some of the code that's existing out in the industry. This is what you're going to find. So, but it would be interesting to see how it works as a function as well. But we're going to figure out what's going to happen here first. Now we do have, wait a second, this is not our placeholder. Which one is our placeholder? Is it edit birthdays? Dang. Ah, there's our placeholder. Okay. So the add birthday, go back to add birthday. We actually started going down the path of being able to add some inputs. Mm -hmm. So do we want to use edit birthday or do we want to use add birthday? I think edit birthday since we don't have anything in there, huh? Yeah. So that we can do it from scratch. Okay, cool. So what are all the fields that we need to capture? For add birthday, we need a full name. Okay. So let's go ahead and put, um, let's replace that placeholder. Let's re oh, you know what? Let's go look at the Bootstrap website and see what some of the forms are that we can use. Um, so let's go into forms overview or form control. Let's go to the form overview and let's scroll down and see what they have. Okay, so they have, this is form text. Disabled for forms, accessibility. Oh, they have SAS. That's it. Okay, let's go look at the uh, validation. Let's scroll down a little bit. Second. So, okay. So if you take out, um, if you take out Mark, what does that happen to? What happens to that form? And go to the next. Oh, okay. Nothing happens. Yeah. Go ahead and submit the form. See if it does anything. Oh, look at that. I think I like that. Yeah. Because we are going to need validation. And so input for validation. Okay, so here it's going to be a form. We'll go ahead and, oh, wait a second. This is needs validation. I'll tell you what, let's start. Let's just use the div class with the label and the input for now. So go ahead and copy that first div. I think it goes further down, three more lines. Yeah, copy that. And then let's go back to your code. 
and go ahead and replace with replace that placeholder, that P tag and everything, replace it with what you just copied from Bootstrap. And let's fix the indentation. You know, I wonder, did we install pretty, prettier or pretty? I think so. And it's still not pretty and it's not making it pretty, huh? <laughs> okay, so let's go ahead and highlight eight through 13 and let's tab twice. One more. And then un untab 13, there we go. That's good right there. So there's a div and there's a div and there's that div and there's that div and there's that div. And let's go ahead and save this. Why is it complaining about the div on line six? Oh, I think we have an extra one. Oh, okay. Let's get rid of 14, I guess. And then... No. Uh, control Z. So div, div, div. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Input. Oh, I know why. At the end of line nine on the input, after required, put a uh, space forward slash. Uh, no, no, no. Let's control Z. Uh, inside the 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 ankle bracket space Very forward cool. slash yeah put a space on oh, space yeah i need a space yeah okay that fixes it so what was happening is that it was expecting a close tag on the input but what we could do is we can do a self closing tag by just adding the forward slash at the very end and that's equivalent to adding the open and close tags okay so let's go ahead and save this and let's go see what this looks like. All right, not bad, not bad. I think um, we need to, I think we need to align the first name to the left. Can we go look at Bootstrap and see why, how it's doing it? Because it's using a form. What we'll do is we'll fix the formatting a little later. Let's go ahead and grab. Oh, wait a second. Hang on. Let's go back to the code. I know what's wrong. We need to replace class with class name. Because remember, class is a keyword. It's capital N class name. Yeah. And then you have another one on line eight. Line nine and line 10. Yeah, we have to remember to rename those. Let's save this and let's go back to see what we got now. Maybe that will fix the alignment. Okay, not yet. That's cool. We'll worry about it after. So let's um, let's go ahead and grab um, the in the example code. Let's go ahead and grab the the last name. Okay. Oops. Oh, you know what? Go back to the example code. You see where it says class row G3. Let's go ahead and grab that class row G3 needs validation. And let's paste that into the parent div. Put that at the, on line six in on that div. Let's save that and see what we get. No, not yet. Okay, that's cool. No worries. We'll figure it out. Go ahead and grab the um, last name. So that's going to go after line 13. And let's fix our indentions. 
And then we need to self close line 16. And then rename class to class names. All right, let's go ahead and save this and then let's go back and see what we have. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there. If you go back to the list. Date of birth, date of death. Date of okay, birth. cool, let's do it. So do they have anything with date of birth in here? Mm -hmm. Oh, okay. You know what? What we can do is let's go back to those, to that form. I think you just hit back arrow. No, go back to the example and go. And I think if you hit back arrow. Yeah. In here, let's go ahead and grab. Um, how are they, how are they separating First name, last name, username, and the address. And the, the how are they separating that into a different? Oh, I don't think they are. I think they're just using columns, huh? Mm -hmm. So that the column will automatically, it'll automatically stack when the port changes from a web form or from a, a desktop to a phone or a mobile device, it'll just stack it. Okay, that's cool. So let's go ahead and grab, um, let's go ahead and grab the, the city and let's put that in there. Right. For those listening, I'm actually communicating with Jonathan mentally. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so on line 22, let's change its city to date of birth. And let's change um, 25. Please provide a birth date or a date of birth, whichever. And then on line 23, the type, instead of being text, is going to be date. Let's save this and see what we get. <clears throat> Remember that Bootstrap works on a 12 column system. Mm -hmm. Right. So every row is 12 columns. So that means that if we want the first name and last name to take up 12, we have to make each one of those six columns. So we need to change the four to a six on each one of those. And we can put the three fields on the second on the second row by doing four columns each. And so you would copy. 21 through 27, and then you would do date of death. And then let's go ahead and copy 14 through 20, and we'll use that as notoriety. On line 37, you see where it says value auto? Let's replace value equals auto with placeholder. Yeah, no, the value, the keyword value oh. with placeholder. I think it's lowercase.
Yeah, placeholder. And then inside where it says auto, inside the, the double quotes, instead of instead of auto, let's put um, notoriety. How about um, instead of that, instead of notoriety, let's just say, let's say, um, description of notoriety. If you scroll up to first and last name, instead of value, let's put, go ahead and put placeholders in there. And the placeholders will be Um, you can just replace Mark with um, first name. Yeah, first name. And then Otto with last name. And let's save it. Let's go see what it looks like. Align center there. That's the problem right there. I, just... I don't know. No, it'll be left. I don't know what that's going to do to the whole site, but let's just try it. Let's save that. Yeah, it actually didn't do anything, huh? Yeah. Well, this one moved to the right or left to you. What, what did? The data goes here. This was centered. So we need to be able, oh, well, that's just a placeholder, right? So we can get rid of that. We're going to need to wrap starting at line six, we need to wrap it in another div, which is a container. So go ahead and press enter after line five and then open up a div tag. And this is going to be class equals container. And then, yeah, you got to put it class name actually. Equals container. And then, um, it's a lowercase container. And then you can put PX-4, which means for, I, I think it stands for like a four pixel um, gutter or padding or something. And then on line seven, you also have to do the class name. Yeah, and then move that div all the way down to the bottom after the last div. All right, let's save this and then see what we got. Okay, a little better. We can probably come back and fix the menu later. Mm -hmm. But yeah, I think this is better. This is gives us a little bit of padding on each side. So that's cool. All right. Okay, we need, we're going to be working with input first name first, okay? And so when we're working with classes, we need to have some type of state so that we can keep track of what our inputs are, you know, because the inputs are driven, um, the, the state happens to be the what do they call it record of source i believe and so that's we don't we don't want to depend on our text box to say hey this is the record of source because then there'll be times where we need to make the decision as like what is the records of source is it the text box or is it the variable that we have in in memory and so we always want to make it a variable in memory and we're going to make it a state okay so after line three let's go ahead and um start up a new line and we're going to say uh, state equals, let's try this state equals and state is an object. So we're going to need to open close um, curly braces. <clears throat> and then um, inside, so go ahead and press enter. 
Yep. Inside of there, we're going to say first name, which is the lowercase first, uppercase name, all one, all together, one word. Handle change. Because we're going to make it generic so that we can use this same function for all other um, all other inputs. So handle change is equal to open parentheses and then inside the parentheses you're going to put e for short for event that's very short e <laughs> and then outside the parentheses you're going to put a fat arrow and it's going to be a function all right and then what we want to do is we're going to console. Um, we're going to console log some information just so that we can see the, the values coming through. Okay. So we're going to do console.log. Um, actually, before you do that, we're going to need to grab some values. Okay. So uh, let's set up a constants. C O N S T. Yep, constant. And let's put um, the target. So just type in target. No, I'm sorry, not target. Uh, key. Key is equal to E dot target dot key. Yeah, semicolon. And then you're going to do a constant value. And it'll be e.target.val. Value. Um, you know what? Change that name value to val. And it'll be e.target.value. And let's go ahead and do console log open parenthesis key comma value. And then semicolon at the end or E uh, key comma val, not value, but val. And then semicolon at the very end. Yeah. And um, so on the input on line 20, let's go ahead and put type in its own in its own line and then tab and then the ID in its own line and the placeholder and the required. And then let's go ahead and, and create a new line after require, but take the forward slash and the, and the ankle bracket with you. And then on here is going to be on change, lowercase on uppercase change. Yeah, equals. And then inside of curly braces is going to be handle change. Not handle change. Sorry. No. Oh. Oops. Let's go ahead and save that. Man, it's those little keywords that just, so let's go ahead and click on that can console tab. Oh. This is real, man. We're gonna be making mistakes. And let's go ahead and type in something in that first first name. No, in the first name box. Oh. Go ahead and just start typing. Okay. Well, this is interesting. We're missing something. Okay, so the key is undefined. Um, oh, target.name. Okay, so it's not target.key, it's target.name on line number nine. Target.name. Let's save this. Yeah, it's fine. You can leave the key the way it is. Let's save this and let's go back to see if it grabs because that um it's not giving us the target.name huh oh 
I know why. Let's go back to the code. Target.id. Try target.id instead of name. Oh. To try target.id. Yep, there it is. Validation custom control one. Okay. So that's not going to buy us anything. So we actually have to rename that control. We have to give that ID the name of our state. So let's go back to the code. On line 22, where it says ID, plug that right in and replace validation custom control one. So here's, here's the trick about this is that that handle change becomes a generic function or a generic uh, event handler because now our ID matches our state, okay? There's one more thing that we need to do is we need to set the value of that input. So you can go and start a new line after line 22. Input value equals open close curly braces. Mm -hmm this dot state dot first name. Cool. All right, let's save this and let's go back. So you're going to notice now that when you type something in there, it's just going to grab the first letter every time because we're not setting state. But now we have our ID, which is first name, and we have our value that we're typing in and now we can set state okay so let's go let's go back to the code and we are going to there is a let me see here there's two ways of of setting state and one they're both perfectly fine but one is more correct than the other and I'm trying to see here. Let me. Let's see here. Okay, I guess we can just use the simple one. Let's go ahead and use a simple one. So we can actually do it after line 11. We can say uh, this dot set state. So set state happens to be a function that comes from the React component. Our edit birthday class inherits everything from the React component. So in component, there's a function called set state. And set state is capital, uh, lowercase set, uppercase state. And this is a function. So I'll go ahead and open close parenthesis. And then inside of the parentheses, open close uh, curly braces. This function takes an object. Okay. And whatever, whatever you send in as an object, it does a comparison. It says, okay, I got four values here, but you're only sending one. Let me find that one and replace it. And it keeps your other four intact, you know, so it only replaces what you send it. So go ahead and inside the uh, curly braces, press enter. You're going to put in, um, let me see, in this case, how do we do this? We have to put it Uh, try try just putting key and then semicolon or, or colon and then vel. And um, you're going to go ahead and terminate with, no, not there, on line 14, terminate with the semicolon. Let's try that and see if this works. This may not work. Okay, this is not working. So let's go back to the code. What we need to do is we don't want the key word. We want the key, whatever the value of key is. So let's put it inside of curly braces. 
to indicate that this is a variable. Let's save that and see if that works. Oh, okay, that didn't like it. Mm -hmm. um, that key has to be inside square brackets. Now try that. Look at that. It's working. Okay, let's go do the same thing to last name. So with last name, let's go ahead and put all those attributes on separate lines. And then we need to add last name to our state up on top. After line five. In fact, go ahead and do comma. You need, you're going to need a comma at the end of the line five. And then go ahead and add the DOB and DOD. So it's lowercase dob, and you could just make it. Um, you can just make it empty. Yeah, empty, empty quotes. And then dod. <clears throat> Look at you. See how the key comes up to last name. Go ahead and do that same thing to first name. See how the key comes up to first name. So that that function that we created becomes generic and it lets the event handle the, I, the, the key that we need and assigns the value based on what's coming from the target. And the target happens to be that input. Mm -hmm. So let's go ahead and do the same thing for date of birth, date of death and notoriety. You might wanna do notoriety first just because it's text and then date of birth and date of, date of death. Might, we might have to do something a little bit different. Oh, it works. Ooh. Oh, that's totally cool. <laughs> I thought we were going to have more trouble, but that's cool. I think that's going to work for, for what we need. So let's do the same thing with date of death. Yeah. All right. Let's fill out the form, see what it looks like in the console. Mm -hmm. So we have our first name as a key, last name as a key. That's totally cool. Look at that. Cool. Okay. I think we're I think we're rocking and rolling here, aren't we? So we need a button to submit this. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we got so hung up on the inputs. We forgot the buttons. <laughs> so let's go look at buttons and see what we got. Um, um, oh, there you go. Submit form. There you go. Copy that. I think you're starting to get the hang of the copy and pasting here. Huh? <laughs> yep. And then you could go uh, right. to 88 and add the button. Oops. Add the button there. Or um, do you want to do it inside or outside? I think you want to do it inside. Okay, so the button, let's go ahead and put class name on the new line. And tab once. Okay, and then uh, let's get rid of the type submit. The whole thing. Yeah. In here, hmm, we're going to need on 
on click. Yeah, on click equals, and then inside of curly braces, this dot handle click. And so we're gonna need to create handle click. So we would create handle click just the way that we created the handle change. So do the same thing. Okay, so in here, what we're going to do is we're gonna do a simple console log And inside the console log, uh, open parenthesis, we're just going to put this dot state. I want to see what we're console logging. And then terminate that with the semicolon. Uh, no, on line 22, terminate with the semicolon. And let's save this and let's fill out the form and then press submit. Nice, look at that, expand that object. So that object is the object that we need to send. So if you go to the swagger on your first tab, and when we submit, when we post a birth date, is that what the object supposed to look like? Yes. Mm -hmm. Oh, it's a full name, Jonathan, not first name, last name. Oh, it's man. a full name. <laughs> so let's go back to the code. Oh, man, it's a good thing we, we checked that, huh? So first things first, let's change first name to full name. DOD, I would make that null instead of um, instead of the, the single quotes, get rid of the single quotes and just make it null. Yeah. And then normally you want to put spaces after the um, after the colon. Okay. I think this is good. Okay, now Handle click is actually going to submit it to the API. So let's go look at our birthday list and we want to go look at how we're calling the API. But this time we're going to do a post instead of a get. So right here, axials. So let's copy line 14 through 20. and then go and paste it inside of the edit birthdays. Inside here? Uh, yeah, you can go ahead and leave the console in there um, and just create a new line after 21. Okay, so there's a couple of things that we need to change here. One of them is the URL on line 22. We need to go figure out what is that URL because it's not is it API birthday? I think it is. Huh? Can we go check the uh, Swagger API? Okay, so it is API birthday, but it's a post, not a get. Let's go back to the code. So instead of axios.get, it's going to be axios.post. So I believe that on the post, we can, after birth date, after the, the first quote, in between the quote and the closing of parentheses on line 22, mm -hmm. we can put comma, this dot state. Um, and then, so if it's successful, this is going to be replace component did mount with handle click. hand cold <laughs> and then the result is going to be fine and then you can get rid of um you can get rid of this dot set state because there's nothing to set the whole thing 
Yeah, I'll line 27 as well. Let's try that out. Oh, oh, we need to import Axios. So let's see how we imported it in the data list and the birthday list. Yep, that would be it. All right, so let's put your first name and your date of birth, leave date of death empty and go straight to notoriety. And then hit submit and see what we get. Oh, oh. Did it work? Maybe, yeah. Let's go look at the database. Oh, let's go back to the list. You should be <laughs> at the bottom of the list. Oh, yeah. Hey. <laughs> <laughs> that is pretty cool, huh? <laughs> man, oh, man. Okay. I, I think, you know what? We got a winner here, man. <laughs> yeah. This is a good place to stop. <laughs> Let's stop while we're ahead. <laughs> Quick recap. We used a class instead of a function, right? Mm -hmm. And we used the life cycle of that class. We could simply, we could easily replace this and use a function and use the uh, React hooks and it would work in the same, in the same manner. Um, I think it's important to learn both. I don't think one has an advantage over the other. I think they were moving to functions, but I, you're going to find a lot of code out in the industry that uses these classes. And so it's important to understand what these classes are doing. You know, um, this is a simple, <clears throat> this is a very simple way of being able to handle the changes by creating a generic handle change and then the handle click and all that. And, and it's not, 100% correct. There's better ways of doing it. But I think this gives you a very good understanding of what React is doing behind the scenes. Mm -hmm. You know, before we start using some libraries to go and do validation for us, to go and do some of this, you know, forms and stuff like that, I, I think it's important that we understand what React is doing with its life cycle before we start hiding all the magic that it's doing, you know, but this is cool. I yeah. mean, <laughs> you know, it's a very simple form. Uh, we use, again, we're using bootstrap five. We were able to get all that in there. I think the next step, and we'll, we'll save it for our, for our next, um, our, our next uh, episode. Um, I want to get through the whole crud using the same method. And then I want to go back and start using some libraries and then separating out our project into something a little bit more, um, how do you call it? Something a little bit more appropriate so that we're not, so that we don't have all our files in, in the source folder, we can okay. have them into, into different folders and stuff. But I think, I think this is a great place to stop here. I mean, I, I think yeah. we, got a, we got a winner. <laughs> That was cool. Yeah. I, I think it kind of tickles you that it works. Uh. <laughs> I'm surprised every time we finish, like it works. At the end. <laughs> I'm like, oh, we did it. <laughs> oh, looked, man. I would be ashamed if we couldn't get it to work after 20 years of experience, you know? But it, <laughs> and the thing is, is that I don't know everything out of the box. You know, it's like, I got to look stuff up, you know, but I know the capabilities. And I was like, wait a second. I think there is a way to do this. You know, it's like, all languages have some basic functionality and you can, you can go ahead and, and exploit and take advantage of those features of the language to get stuff to work in the way that you want it to work. So, yeah, that's, that's pretty cool. Yeah. I like it. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All righty. I, I think, I, I think it's a wrap. Yeah, that's it. 
Cool. Until next time. On the road to code. Peace out.